actually, I really like sailing and I like creating films and photos. So um, yeah, if someone calls me for an assignment with sailboats and I'm like, okay, yeah, They're let's go, it. you know. Yeah. When I can combine the two, that's 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 a perfect situation. Yeah. So today, we're gonna meet Brent. Brent is our one of our patrons and he just crossed the Atlantic Ocean a few weeks ago in a very special boat and I'm really looking forward to it. I only had contact with him uh, for yeah for three years during a message on LinkedIn and uh, yeah now we're finally gonna meet each other and uh, I'm really curious what about all his stories about his Atlantic crossing. message on whatsapp so we shared location and he's walking towards us and there he is we found each other here he is Ben Schell whoa after three years how you doing man yeah good good, good to good? see you good to see you man wow good to see you after three years after you, three years you yeah. sent a linkedin message yeah that was the start of the corona pandemic i believe it, yeah it was it was really in the beginning we were stuck in amsterdam yeah and I was checking out my LinkedIn and then I saw a message of you and then we we started interacting. Yeah, we had a long call. Yeah, we had a long call. I believe our first call was like one and a half hours. Or yes, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, so um, my name is Brent. Um, yeah, so we met like three years ago. I think we have a lot of uh, similar passions. I do a lot of sailing, I like sailing, I'm into media, making films, I've got my own uh, marketing company. Yeah, I think that's how we met and we really clicked on all our similar uh, passions, so uh, yeah. Yeah, and we kept in contact. Yeah. You became a patron. I became a patron. And one of the first, I believe. Not the so, first. No, not the first. Not, not the, the first. first. One of the first. One of the first, yeah. yeah. We're gonna drive back to the, um, to the farm where we are staying. This is a nice place. Doesn't get any more Dutch than this. No. <laughs> With the, um, the swans. The swans. Cows, sheep. Cows, chickens. Train station. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Brent, after three years, tell me about, about your dream because you had a quite a special year last year, right? Yeah, yeah, it was a really special year. Uh, lots of ups and downs. I think like a lot of people had a lot of ups and downs probably due to Corona and, uh, you know, working a lot from home. And uh, yeah, one of my big dreams was uh, to yeah sail in the Volvo Ocean Race. Okay. Uh, as a? No, not as a sailor because you have to, you know, you have to train a lot for that. But as a media guy. Okay. You know. I love to do media and I love sailing. Yeah. So to you want to combine it? To combine those two, that's like the dream. Okay. Yeah, I actually did a, I applied for the job in 2014, 2015. Okay. I, I wrote a big letter, but I didn't get invited to, uh, you know, uh, show my work, but. Um, in 2014? Yeah, 2014. Okay, wow. In the beginning of this year, I, uh, I got an invitation to uh, be the o OBR uh, in the Ocean Race Europe for the Dutch team. On board? Reporter. On board reporter. Yeah. So then you have to film and yeah, so you, you step on board and you have a drone, you have your camera and you're just gonna, you know, uh, catch all the stories on board and fly your drone from the back of the ship. And uh, wow. Yeah, pretty challenging, but uh, yeah, it's, I think the best job in the world. Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. imagine. Yeah. I can imagine. And what, yeah. what kind of boat? The VO 65, okay. so that's the ocean race uh, boats they're using now. And uh, yeah, it's a carbon racer. It's uh, 65 feet, it's really fast. There's like no luxury on board. So we don't use the toilet. We have no fridge. There is a toilet. There is a toilet, but we don't use it because it gets dirty, you know, and- So you don't go to the toilet then? You don't go to <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, you have to do it from the back. Oh. So, so you have, uh, you know, it's uh, the, the, the back of the boat, it's, it's open. open, so yeah. if, if the water comes down the deck, it just flushes off the deck. Okay. And you have to hold the railing and, and do your stuff overboard. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty challenging because, um, 
you know the first time i went on board i was like shit i gotta go to the toilet yeah but i didn't i, ha I hadn't seen how, <laughs> how how people do that and um yeah so i asked some people but they're like sailors they're like i oh, just hang over and you just do your thing you know yeah if like, yeah, that's not really a good good explanation you know so then someone had to go to the toilet and it's not appropriate to look obviously no but uh, but you have to but learn I, ha <laughs> I have to see how it works you know so uh yeah so i was sitting on the side of the boat and then secretly looking at, and then our eyes crossed you know it was a bit of a yeah awkward <laughs> awkward moment but it was funny yeah there's no shame on board as those sailors they they see so much of each other you know they're they're like there's no shame there's no shame there's no shame but this is the ocean race the europe ocean race or? yeah this was the ocean race europe that was in uh may and june i believe okay so you started pretty well no actually the year started started pretty uh the year started okay but we had like we had we had the lockdown yeah. i was working a lot i was um feeling uh yeah i was feeling overwhelmed with all my work i was uh having stress um dizziness uh, having uh, small anxiety attacks because i was just i was just like only focusing on work only editing shooting editing and and, and stay yeah and well, working from home a lot you know okay. and not yeah. not going out of the out of the house and um yeah so i was actually in a place where i was like i really need to take a rest because this is this was too much okay and i thought at that time it was like physical um, and I went to the to the doctor for examinations and everything. And then uh, my good friend Bart Salomans, he called me. He does a lot of media and PR for sailors, like okay. Olympic sailors. And he said, like, hey, uh, I know you you told me a time ago that you wanted to be an onboard reporter uh, onboard reporter on the VO65. And uh, yeah, we have the Ocean Race Europe. Do you want to become the no way. reporter? But no, normally I would have said yes, you know. I, I, of course. I would have run to the boat, grabbed my stuff, and I would yeah. I, I would have gone there. But yeah, I, at that time I was I was like feeling really bad, and I was on the couch for for a couple of days just oh, watching really? TV oh, because wow. I was like I was overworked. So uh, I had to make a decision if I wanted to do that. And with yeah. my dizziness, yeah, it was a hard choice to make at that moment. Yeah. <laughs> your sailing adventure started? Well, um, I'm from the nor north of the Netherlands and uh, I come from a really beautiful province called Friesland. The same as Rianne? Yeah. Oh, it's the same as Rianne? Rianne, are you from Friesland? Yes, definitely. Where are you from? Friesland Boppe. Where? Jereveen. Come from Jereveen and I come from Drachten. Yeah, <laughs> She's my neighbor. She mm. was my neighbor. Oh, wow, I didn't know. That's cool. She was born on a boat yeah. and never sailed. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. But uh, yeah, in Friesland, you have a lot of uh, lakes and canals. And so when you grow up, it's like uh, uh, mandatory that you start sailing and ice skating and uh, right? Yeah, you, but you didn't sail when you grew no, up then? No, only once in a folk. Yeah, oh yeah. But only for an hour with the family, uh, some family. Uh, but you did do ice skating though. Yes, a lot. Okay, yeah, yeah. A lot. yeah. <laughs> Hi. So either, either w yeah, one of the two, you know? <laughs> Winter girl. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we did a, a lot of sailing uh, back in Friesland to do a lot of uh, competitions, local competitions there. I have two classic wooden boats. Okay. Yourself? Uh, yeah, we, together with my brother. Okay. And uh, I have a 16 quadrat. It's a small uh, wooden boat. And um, that was a very special boat because I got that from my uh neighbor uh he became like a grandpa to me and my brother and okay. we took care of him for a couple of years and then he wanted to do something back and he gave us that boat wow yeah that's really cool long story so i'll keep it short for, the, for this uh and the other boat we have is a 30 quadrat is the big brother of the 60 quadrat yeah and we the boat we are sailing now it's actually my great grandfather's boat Wow. It was built in 1943 during the Second World War. And uh, I have footage from 19, I think 1945 or 1947 Ooh. where you see the boat sailing in, uh, in Friesland. Yeah. Wow. We found that boat back like uh, six years ago now um, on the land uh, with a farmer's land. Okay. And uh, it was completely wrecked. And we asked the farmer, like, what are you going to do with the boat? He was like, um, I'm going to 
uh, I'm gonna sell two more years and then it's gonna end up in the fireplace. Okay. And we were like, you can't do that. That's our great grandfather's boat. My, my grandfather sailed in that boat. My father sailed in that boat when he was young. So we bought that boat back uh, for the price of the land that was in the keel. <laughs> and uh, we started restoring the boat and we did everything uh, except uh, the skin of the hull. Yeah. Um, but we made a new mast, new deck, new everything on the boat. So uh, yeah, that was quite uh, quite something. So we became second on the Dutch Championships and we almost won the with snake. With this boat? Yeah, with this boat. And we almost won the Snake Week. It's a local competition, yeah. but it's, it's a very... Big competition. Yeah, in the Netherlands, yes. It's a really cool event. But yeah, both times we became second. Um, then Corona hit, so I didn't do much sailing for myself, you know. Yeah. But... Uh, yeah, I love sailing and uh, restoring those boats together with my father and my brother and uh, yeah. Yeah, so you have your company making, is it especially for the, um, for the, for the yachting industry or is it? Um, no, it's not especially for the yachting industry. I do for a lot of different companies, um, but naturally I really like sailing and I like creating films and photos. So um, yeah, if someone calls me for an assignment with sailboats and I'm like, okay, yeah, then let's go, in. you know, then it's, it's fun. It's yeah. fun and, and uh, you know, it's my work, so. Yeah. When I can combine the two, that's 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 perfect situation. Yeah. So you started sailing from the Netherlands to. Yeah. So the first trip was um, yeah was the Ocean Race Europe. France is uh, in uh, Lorient. Is where the where the race started. Yeah. Uh, then to Cascais, no, uh, yeah, Cascais, and then through the uh, Gibraltar Channel to yeah. Alicante, and then from Alicante to Genoa. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the first trip? That was the first trip, yeah, with the Fio 65. So that yeah. was, uh, yeah, it was really special because um, we had like half of the boats were people who, who've sailed many times in the in the Volvo Ocean Race. Uh, and so the Olympics really professional sailed. guys. Yeah, uh, Peter van die Kerk, really famous sailor. We had uh, Simeon Tienpont, who was a skipper, gert Poortman, who was the front deck. And we had uh, Pieter Jan Posma, Olympic sailor, Fio yeah. sailor. Uh, and we had a, on the other side we had like a lot of talent. So this Ocean Race Europe was especially for um, combining uh, youngsters. Yeah, combining youngsters with the experienced people and to learn from each other. So that wow. was yeah, it was really cool. And for me, it was uh, my first trip, you know. So yeah. Uh, yeah. And how was that? Yeah, the boat. The boat. If you're a sailor, you want to get you want to get on a boat like that, you know. And you can do it like <laughs> like charter the boat or go on a day sail with the, with a boat like that. But it was very special to see the team, you know pushing that boat really to the limit and they're like not holding back they're like well going going full strength you know 20 for 7 20 for 7 and um yeah it's really special to see you know time is time a deal is a deal you know it, it's like really they go all in they go all in and the boat goes really fast uh 25 knots easy you know the first time we did 25 knots, I never did 25 knots on a boat before. So I was like looking around at everyone, but I mean, like, holy shit, yeah. we're doing 25 knots. And uh, they were like, just, just sailing the boat. They were enjoying themselves, but they were just sailing the boat. This is cruising for them. This is cruising for them. Yeah, we wow. had a flat sea. 25 knots, man. Yeah, it's crazy, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all in all, great experience to, to be in a team like that with those kinds of people. Yeah, really special experience. And you learned a lot, I think, as a sailor as well, right? Yeah, it's a very different sailing, obviously, from what I do, because I've been, when I sailed back in the Netherlands, it's with my brother, and you're with two persons on the boat, so you make all the decisions together. And yeah. on a big boat like that, you have to, you're like with the whole team, and everybody's got really specific. Their own positions, yeah, I think. Yeah, so uh, communication is really important, uh, you know, uh, trusting each other. Yeah. When someone is at the bow and, and you know, there are big waves and there's a lot of stuff happening, you really have to rely on the people that are in the back of the boat trying to organize everything and do everything for the, for the man on the bow, you know. So there's um, a lot of challenges that come with sailing a bigger boat like that. Yeah, yeah but it's very special to see how everybody cooperates to... Uh, to make uh, the boat go fast. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. And this yeah. was part of the of the ocean race. The ocean yeah, race this was Europe. part of the ocean race because uh, they couldn't do the big ocean race uh, due to Corona. Okay, and then after that you did the crossing, right? Yeah, yeah. The the head sponsor of the do you say head sponsor? Is that... I don't know the main sponsor. Oh, the main sponsor. The um, so the main sponsor of the boat is Janssen de Jong. It's a Dutch uh, constructors comp uh, company. Okay. 
the CEO is uh, Ivo, really nice guy, and uh, he's sponsoring all these sailing, uh, uh, all these innovative sailing campaigns in the Netherlands. Okay. And we were at an event. I was filming a sponsor event for them, and he told me they were going to do the transatlantic with uh, some people. So I was like, a shit, I gotta try to get myself <laughs> in there. So I said, oh, with how many people are you going? He's like, oh, 12. I'm like, mm, okay, so every bed is full, you know? I, yeah, because because you, you, yeah you so the boat, the boat, yeah, 12 people, then the boat is full. And, um, but uh, I was going to try it anyway. So I said to him like, so what are you gonna do with the media? Are you just gonna sail and tell people stories or do you need pictures and movies, you know? Of course. And he was like, oh, yeah, maybe, yeah, pictures and movies. Yeah, 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 I think we need that. I think I think so too, you know? <laughs> but I didn't hear from him for uh, uh, from a couple of weeks. And then um, then I got a call, like, uh, uh, it was actually his secretary. Hi, Brent, we need some information because we're gonna put you on the crew list. I was like, oh, what crew list? Yeah, for the transatlantic. <laughs> I was like, am I going? So that's when wow. I heard that I was going. Yeah. yeah. And you started in the. Yeah. So we first flew to Lanzarote, okay. and uh, the crew was already there preparing the boat. They obviously sailed it from uh, from the Netherlands to uh, to Lanzarote. They were preparing the boat over there, and then the guests came in, and then we had two days uh, before we. So we, we, we started in Lanzarote. Yeah. And um, yeah, obviously I knew I knew a couple of people who were sailing on the boat because I sailed before with them on the uh, the oh, ocean. It was the same team, the same captain. Yeah, some of the yeah, yeah. Yeah, so a uh, different captain, but it was like you have a, a couple of people who are like working uh, on a daily basis on the boat and the boat is in normally in The Hague. Okay. You know, they take care of the boat, but that, those are the, the new talents. They, okay. Th that was the crew as well for the transatlantic uh, ocean crossing and our captain was a very experienced sailor Ernst Jan uh, but he's not a he doesn't do competitions but he's more like a delivery skipper okay yeah yeah but it's still you know it's racing all these guys they know how to race and uh, we had um yeah the the, the transatlantic was sponsored by Jan de Jong of course so we had five guests on board okay so these guests they also had to train they had to do uh safety exercises you know man overboard and all that kind of stuff they had been training for five six months full on you know to get fit and to make the make the trip yeah and um yeah well Obviously, when you get it with a whole new crew on the boat, uh, you have to see like how are things going, if it, is everything working? Because when you leave, immediately the watch system uh, starts. starts, and uh, you know you, you're f four hours on deck and four hours of rest. So you go to your bunk. Yeah. You share a bunk with your the one who is opposite in the schedule of you. Yeah. So you share your uh, sleeping bag as well. Uh, so that's, that can be quite challenging. Why? Uh, well, everything is wet. Um, well, so it could, can be nice that your sleeping bag is warm, but it, <laughs> it can also be that your sleeping bag is warm and humid, you know? Yeah. Yeah, when, when you're with a new crew, you have to see how everything will work out. But it was really nice. We had a really good crew and also the, the guests. They were never complaining, always working really hard. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you have to make a jibe, it's like everybody, all the people who are sleeping, you have to wake them up. Okay. So it's, uh, yeah, going downstairs, waking them up. We got, we're going to jive in, uh, in like five minutes or something. So you prepare have to, yourself. Yeah. So you have to get out of your bed like 
quickly dress yourself and we have to do what we have to do yeah so uh but these guys are really funny i remember when i had to wake someone up and he was just like he had he had just been like four hours on deck and he was tired and he was like broken and i woke him up and i was like really like and he was like really far asleep and then i woke him up and said we have, we have to jive he's like Oh, I'll be there. I'll be there. And he just gets out of his bed. And you know that was the mentality that the guests had, had as well. So wow. I think the, the the crew as a whole, we really grew together. And uh, yeah, we really pushed the boat, and we had a lot of fun, and we really respected each other as well in everything. And uh, it, it is a racing boat, so sometimes you have to be. Yeah, it's it's hard on board because the water is coming over constantly. Yeah. So I, I can imagine that some people that they, they they could be in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and they're like, I want to get off this boat. <laughs> what am I doing? Did you have a thought like that? No, no. Were you scared at some moment? No, no, not at all. No, and we had some crazy times. We had some we had some really big winds and we had uh, um, thunderstorms. Okay. We had some big squalls and yeah, it can but. If you're on that boat, it, yes, it is a big racing boat, but if you're on a boat, you feel like the whole boat is made for this stuff, you know? Okay. It's made for racing, for ocean it's made, racing. For, made for the ocean, and you feel that on the boat. And I think the crew, they're really confident and they know what they're doing, you know? They're sailing this boat like for weeks years. at a time, you know? They're sailing on this for years already. Yeah. And uh, they're young, but they're really experienced and, and really great guys. So I think trust, you know, the whole trust in each other, that's also a very, very special thing to see. Yeah. yeah. How much time did it take you from Lanzarote to the Caribbean? Uh, to, uh, so it took us 10 days the first time we saw land again. Wow. So that's... But that's, 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 that's fast. Yeah, it's pretty fast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bauer Becking did the same distance. Uh, the year before in 12 days so we were very happy we took off two days of bow backing wow. so, uh, and that's yeah. the name right yeah definitely definitely so that was uh yeah and, and it was nice so normally you have the trade winds so you go from Lanzarote down to the trade south wind. yeah and then you have like a straight line to the caribbean yeah but when we were uh departuring it was all like all different weather systems so we really had to navigate the atlantic ocean to you know get where we want to be okay so, but that was pretty fun because then you have to make tactical decisions and you know, have to look at the forecast and that you see squalls incoming and you're like oh damn there's thunderstorms in there you know okay so you so have to... exciting yeah wow yeah that that that, that made it very exciting yeah, yeah. and w was it because you started earlier uh, than the season to do the crossing or was it just is the uh, are the weather patterns changing yeah well sometimes they just get disturbed yeah. so normally now that that was the time that there's a really good trade wind but yeah. um yeah now it was there just, wasn't. just a couple of days what disturbed especially yeah it's right at the time that we were supposed to uh, you know to cross yeah yeah and yeah. you you didn't wait for that for another to, no no weather window no, no. just go yeah, we could we, we we had the choice to take two routes. We could have gone south through the trade winds, yeah, but it would have been like uh, very uh, mild winds, you know, and okay. easy sailing. And we're like, yeah, if we're gonna do that for 10, 12 days, it's gonna be, you know, it's yeah. not gonna be exciting. No. So we took the northern northern route. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, we got we got our uh, we got our uh, share of uh, uh, fun and adventure. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. this was your first Atlantic Ocean crossing. Yeah, it was my first crossing. Yeah. Yeah, you don't see, you see a lot of water. Yeah. <laughs> you see obviously. a lot of water. And we saw like two other boats okay. and uh, one airplane. And that's all the contact you will see on, on the ocean. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty uh, strange when you're like in the middle and, and you're, you're, you're sending the boat like really hard. You're doing like 28 knots, you know. 28 you're, knots. Yeah, man. You're, you're crashing into waves and you're like, yeah, you're like, we're, we're like really alone here. You look at the horizon and I always have the feeling that when you look at the horizon, there's something behind it, you know? Yeah. But there isn't on the Atlantic Ocean. You can fall off, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then in 10 days, we sailed to uh, the Caribbean. We went to Curaçao, one of the Dutch islands. Dutch Antilles. Yeah, Dutch Antilles. And uh, yeah, great experience. When you see the island and you're like, oh, we can go off the boat, you know, take a shower, sleep in a normal bed. Yeah, yeah, that's really nice. Have some fresh food because we only eat like um, uh, freeze-dried food on the okay. boat. Okay, so, so just add some hot water and... Add some hot water, stir it, wait a couple of minutes and then uh, then, you, then you can eat. But, you know, first couple of meals are okay, but, you know, when After you're... After 10 up, days. 10 days, you're like, oh, 
I could use like a uh, fresh uh, food. Yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah, and fun thing uh, to get back to was obviously we were with 12 people, so the boat was full. Yeah. So I had, to, I, had, I said, I don't care where I sleep. That was your pitch, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that was with my pitch. He was like, the, the boat is full. I was like, I don't care where I sleep if I have to put my mattress on the bottom or whatever. So I was actually sleeping in uh, one of the storage uh, under the beds. Oh, really? So it's like full carbon fiber. And I, and I made a bed with a, <laughs> with, a, with a mattress. So I could make a little bit of a bed, but I was like straight like into the, into a corner. I've tried to look up if I have some footage of that as well. Oh, wow. But uh, yeah, I had to sleep in a storage uh, bunk uh, box. How do you call it? Yeah. Oh, wow. But yeah, anything to cross the ocean, yeah. right? Yeah. So this is really a dream coming true. Yeah, definitely. definitely Came true. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, now, so maybe we're, you know, we're seeing if that's going to happen. Uh, for me, um, I would love to be the OBR for the ocean race as well. The actual ocean race. The actual ocean race is going to start in December. Yeah. Uh, so we're still talking and, uh, you know, they're enthusiastic, I think, to have me on board. I'm still enthusiastic. Um, so that could be a possibility for uh, next year. Wow. Yeah. So what a start. So you started your, your year really not expecting this, right? No, 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 no. No, I wasn't expecting this and I was pushing myself really hard to do, to, to, uh, have things happen in a certain way and then I think when I let it all go uh, things started to fall in place and they just started to happen yeah and now I just go with the flow and I'm really happy that this has all happened to me and uh, because of you know doing this uh, you meet a lot of new people you meet yeah You're new expanding. clients yeah. as well and uh, yeah it's a yeah. it's such a nice story it's so, so good to have you on board that we met yeah. uh, three years ago that you became a patron that we are we are building our community, as you yeah. know, and so your experience as an ocean sailor, other patrons of ours, they are now on the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So nice. uh, 33 foot, we have to I respect them. that as well, wow. because when I hear stories that uh, that people are like, yeah, yeah, you and uh, Rihanna obviously sail together, and, yeah. but I hear like people are sailing, crossing the ocean as well with like two people. Like, how do you do that? Yeah. That You're going to like, one has to be outside. Then you see, then you see each other for like one hour and then you, then the other one has to go to sleep. You know, you have to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. That's but crazy. It is. It is. But, um, I think for longer crossings, we can put a mattress in the, in our cockpit. Yeah. So we can <laughs> sleep together. But wouldn't you feel more safe to be with like four people? Yeah, could be. Our, I would do a transatlantic crossing. I would do it with four people. Our our friend uh, Pedro will join us, so uh, that's that's for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but on the other hand, we have some uh, friends of ours. They have the same boat, and they were a little bit insecure, and they asked, I think, four extra guys on board oh, yeah. for the Atlantic crossing. But n no one knew each other from before, and yeah. it was really pressuring. And they were only making food service, and so they they, they said. After that, they did a Pacific crossing and they said that we did it, the two of us, and it was yeah. the most easy going crossing. Yeah, yeah. So I think team is really important to have a good team. And Rihanna and I, we are a good team together. Yeah. And I think with Pedro on board, it would be it would be fine. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, I think yeah. three three would work. Yeah. Three would work. Yeah. 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 But we never do the nights, the, the proper shifts, right? Yeah. So what, when we do a longer crossing, then I take care of the night. Yeah, uh, I do my small sleeps. Yeah. So let's say. Uh, Are you take a nap on the back of the boat, like? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm uh, on, the, on the helm position. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So then I sleep. I put my alarm, of course, uh, twenty times. Oh yeah. And then every fifteen minutes, I wake up. I do yeah. my round. I check everything. If everything is okay, and then yeah. I continue. All right, I respect that too. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that, that's more cruising, right? That's not yeah. pushing the boat to the yeah. limits. And um, so yeah. what you guys did is being completely wet all day long because yeah. you are making that kind of speed and yeah thanks yeah. thanks for sharing your story you're welcome yeah you're welcome let's uh, create some uh, eat some proper dutch cheese yeah yeah we already took them, but <laughs> i think we have to cut some new <laughs> pieces i ate take a knife i ate all the the cheese so. oh, yeah. cool, man. thanks man is going on
it feel the breeze family well in this episode we're going to tell you all about it. we're going to talk about our sailing plans this year and no we are not going to sell our sailing yacht Okay, Pedro, here we are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I'm going to get in the bin. Yeah, no. Deep. Fuck you, you man. <laughs>